Organ Trail is a game I've streamed and played while not editing. It's based off the Organ Trail, big shock there. The game was released in May of 2013 on Steam. It wasn't purchased a lot. Even many just keeping it in their Steam library and never playing it. it would have a few spikes of popularity over the years, such as in July of 2013. Unfortunately though, it dipped uh, next month back to 200 players and decreasing. It wasn't until June of 2014 where it rose back to 1,000 players before next month it was back to 300 players and decreasing to where we are now. It's sad to see one of your favorite games be forgotten. With only 17 players as of the time I wrote this script, it's safe for me to say, but this game is dead. Let's go over the history. Ryan Wilmer, age unknown. Likely in his 30s as of now, Ryan has developed a parody of Organ Trail, and you won't guess what he called it. Organ Trail? Organ Trail was developed in Adobe Flash to be played on Facebook. This was likely a hit with its own soundtrack and multiple updates until on February 22nd, with the year being unknown, he stopped updating the game. I can't really tell when it was uploaded, but it was likely uploaded in 2011 due to the copyright date. He then made a Kickstarter and got a Steam Greenlight up. Remember when he had to use Steam Greenlight? It's clear now that it was very successful with the mobile port being published on August 8th, 2012. For Android and iOS, with both still being updated to this day. March 19th, 2013 gave Organ Trail to Steam. The fucking Ouya got Organ Trail on June 18th, 2013. PlayStation got the complete edition on October 20th, 2015. What's so funny about this is that the Ouya got the game before PlayStation. As of now, he is now corporate CEO of the company he founded. The men who wear many hats, with their first game being Organ Trail Director's Cut. So Organ Trail starts up on the protagonist playing the tutorial. You run out of ammo and are saved by Clements. Clements gets you to DC where you have to kill him because he was infected. So that's the story. Anyway, this game is a choose your own adventure game, like Organ Trail. Organ Trail allows you to choose your vehicle, choose a destination, boss bat. No. This game came out with DLC that includes what I listed. So the main game has you to get into a station wagon as your main vehicle. With no choice of direction, you go from Washington DC to Safe Haven, Oregon. Along the way, you go through landmarks and actual cities in the US, which for a geography geek like me, gives me a boner. It's a great way the game keeps people active, like how random events happen while driving, like normal dysentery shit, but also like getting stabbed and trading useless shit. This makes great fun while screen sharing this game, as you just complain at each other. <laughs> I fucking love that. Even funnier easily is the fact that you can tweet this shit with an option on the top right on mostly everything, and you get Shit like, black women put down men, black women put down Trump, and even customized gravestones when you die, such as, here lies black woman, she was independent, and strong, and, nick. Quite funny to me how this shit is even allowed. Now you can take jobs, when in destinations, each ranging from going to get something at the risk of injury to bandits being held up with you to kill them. The guns you can select are the rifle, quick reloading one shot gun, a shotgun, a slow reloading three shot shotgun, and a revolver, a slow reloading four shot gun. Generally the rifle is always picked. When you are in a destination, you are also limited to either the combat trainer or auto shop. Each has benefits, like combat will carry with every shooting mission and scavenging while auto shops have upgrades that will mostly last the, uh, a game but can only work when traveling. Speaking of scavenging, you can scavenge to attempt to find food and shit and risk can vary. At night it's suicide, but at day it's low. You can also trade which is helpful when you are stranded and an item is needed 
When you make it to the end, you can go through a mission filling up generators to open the gates and complete in the game. Overall, it's a good game for just five bucks. Hmm. Now, to me, the price is justified. But there was an idea where Ryan wanted the game to be free. But since now he t turned the shit into a company, he did need to make profit. But why is the mobile port cheaper then? The hey, first result on Google is, is Oregon Trail still free? And fuck yeah it is! <laughs> there are also some very quirky easter eggs, like naming a crew member Chuck Norris gets more unique events, the Left 4 Dead arm from the grave, Night of the Living Dead, and way more, even a dedicated achievement. Now, the Final Cut DLC was released on October 20th, 2015 that changed the game completely. New location that you can choose to go to, new cars that you unlock, a hit and run job, new bosses, a fishing minigame, and uh, that's all I could think of. Well these vehicles are pretty badass, I must say though. The way you unlock these are bullshit. The SUV makes sense, just beat the game. And the Jaguar, you need to beat uh, the game on suicide again. Makes sense. But the instigator, you need to beat a boss that you can only get by selling Jared to slavery. And the UFO, you can get by beating the aliens at Area 51. The hit and run job is fun. The bosses include oh a radioactive dog that attack by bite, a bear what which the can die, bear? aliens as I mentioned earlier, abandoned boss again as I mentioned earlier, and a kraken that you fight at the end which you have two endings that you can go through. You can defeat him or fuck up. You have it where your legs are broken, where you have to spam A and D to survive, and Clements saves you. Wow. It's either I'm ha having writer's block, or that's not a lot of DLC. And that's worth five bucks. No. No, no, no. This should be at least two dollars and fifty cents, with how much content was given. With what the exception is, with the game being worth five bucks, I expect the same love and care involved, yet we got less? So I guess it's on to the opinion now. Graphics. It's pretty simple DOS box graphics, with the idea of the parody, and I say it works because it's supposed to be the Oregon Trail, and it uses Oregon Trail graphics. But even though it uses Oregon Trail graphics, it still looks stellar for being pixel art. It looks like Celeste. It's, it's like accurately resembles it, so I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Playability, it's very playable in the sense that you play the tutorial, which you're forced to play, and it's keyboard and mouse, so you know this can help you. Drag and drop, you know, for shooting, it's a four out of five. Music, it's MIDI style. It's made by Ben and Crossbow. It really fits the apocalyptic style, and I've also been playing it during this. And just like Episymium, you could buy the soundtrack for a 90... Oh, 5 out of 5. Bullshit. Actually, it's not really existent here. You have a difficulty slider from easy to suicide, it's so it's your fault if you fail. Though there's a couple of bugs which I can't get into right now, uh, so because of that I say a 4 out of 5. Now, personal. This is a lovely game. I love it. My friends haven't played it, or Back of the Bus hasn't played it, so they wouldn't know how this game works. But I say that this is a 5 out of 5 just because of its presentability and it's a childhood game, essentially.